let's just jump right into this chainsaw sharpening video. I want to start off with a few things that you shouldn't do um, to get that that's hampering you from getting good results. Obviously, this isn't the first video you watched. And uh, hopefully, if I can keep this as brief as possible, you'll sharpen better with just a few tips and tricks, knowing what's what you're doing wrong. And then it's easier to start learning how to do what's right. So if we just start sharpening right here. You see how that moves when I lean into it? You can't chase the tooth around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten the chain up just a touch, tighter than we'd actually run it while using the saw. So this way we're not chasing the tooth around with the file. Okay, got the chain tensioned up nicely. Um, the tooth's pretty tight in there. And uh, I've got an old file here and I just wanna show you, you know, that your file is gonna wear out um, and that you'll get a lot better results with a fresh file where you're not using as many strokes. So watch this and see how, what little bit of, of uh, chips come off. See, it's really not, I mean, it's doing something, but I'm more scraping off. Let's switch to a nice fresh new file. You can see that? So nice. All right, so that's the end of the video. Okay, all kidding aside, um, trying to sharpen a chainsaw is very frustrating to say the least. Uh, if you'll follow with me for the next little bit, I'll show you how to make more consistent, better sharpened chains. And with a little extra practice, you can actually have better than out of the box sharp um, and cutting speed. So I've taken an old chain off of a customer saw and put it on my well, my 288 here. Um, let me show you a little bit about what I saw and why I thought this would be a good chain to use. So when we look at this chain, some of these angles, look how pointy that is. Okay, your witness mark right here it's not the same angle. All right, so what you'll have to do is follow that better or line up with this. The other thing that I see wrong with this chain, all right, and see there's some damage up here in the point. That's normal. You know, you're going to either you're going to put it in the dirt or whatever. But what happens is is when you put your when you put your file in there and you start to file see how much of the file is above the tooth. You want about a third of the file above. So when we start this, we're actually going to file downward first. All right, here's the one that I just did. And you'll see, back out, there we go. So we've got just a little bit of file sticking out of the top. Uh, where'd she go? All right, so here's the one I just did. You notice we've got that nice C-shape right there. And if we went a little deeper, we could actually get more of that hook. But you'll see here on this new chain that there's a ridge right there. All right. You're actually going to have to knock that down because when you set the file in there, it's actually going to keep, it's going to suspend the file. And it's going to put you in a place where you're not going to be able to have good results. So you're going to have to knock that down first, and then you can start filing into the tooth. So here, let's put this back in the vise, and we'll do a few teeth and talk about it. This should be your biggest takeaway from this video, because this is something you don't realize you're doing. And even if it takes trying to film yourself while you're sharpening, you know, just get your camera out and do its thing. But... You know, after you've done this for a while, I'm just going to get down, and then I'm going to start working my way back into this tooth, even though it's got way too much top plate angle on it. I want you to notice my hands. 
you know, this was done at the factory by a machine. There we go. Just a little bit more. All right. So imagine this. When these teeth were sharpened at the factory, this came up to a perfect stop. A grinding wheel came down, sharpened it. It advanced it forward, went into the exact same spot. The grinding wheel came down. You know, so this is machine done. And you're trying to recreate that kind of accuracy with a stick. Um, what you'll see yourself doing is you'll have a hook or something or you'll, you won't be flat. You know, the idea is, you know, I go straight across, don't go roll down because you'll damage the area that you're sharpening. But work on this, all right? So again, I'm gonna get down just a little bit. And then, so this is a motion like that. I'm pushing into and pulling. So with equal pressure on both hands, I'm making the file much more stable. I'm not just looking at just the tooth because all of a sudden now I don't miss that. Take your field of view, back it out, and keep going nice and straight. I guarantee you, if you watch yourself file, you're either filing like this, like that, or there's a swish motion in your hand, okay? And the sooner you can straighten that out, turn yourself into a little machine, the better results you'll get. Here's a brand hammer new tooth. And you'll notice how nice and straight the side plate is over here and how straight this leading cutting edge is. That is one of the reasons why you get good results with an out of the box chain. So what you're trying to do is match that. And actually my angle is just a little bit more pointy than the factory one, but not by much. Um, so let's do one more and I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna keep you in nice and close right here and you can kind of watch how this progresses. All right, so I can get you in any tighter at all. That's as tight as it'll go. Um, I'm going to, and th because my file's above, too far above the top plate of the tooth and you notice I'm really not even touching right there. All right, I'm gonna get down and I'm following that angle. All right, now I'm finally starting to touch most of the top of the tooth. Still not quite there. You know, and that's how you reshape. You know, don't think of it as just sharpening. What you're trying to do with this stick right here is shape metal. So, I mean, don't- Okay, let's look at the finished product, what you want to shoot for. Again, nice clean top plate angle, nice clean side plate. The other side of this chain, we flip it around, all right? And we've, so we've got that, that hook shape right there. So there's a reverse C and that side plate, that's really gonna do nice. Okay, I'm right-handed. So what happens is, is most people that are right-handed, you know, for me to use to, to file like this, I'm uncomfortable. My left hand doesn't do everything I want it to. So what I do is switch up and I come on this side while it's in the vent. Get down there and get that file. So a third to a quarter of it's above. I'm matching my angle and I'm reshaping. Look how that came around here. I'll bring in for that last little bit. I'm gonna do one more. Is that on the right tooth? Yeah. Okay, we got a snaggle that is. Now we've got something on this tooth. So right here, that corner's dented. You're going to have to file past that in order to get 
Okay, I gotta take a couple of strokes down before I can start leaning in on this. Okay, so when you look at this, I've got, there's still just a little bit of a dent on the corner of this tooth. All right, and I wanna get, so if there's any dent left on it, I gotta get that last, there it is. Let's do one more. This one's dented as well, or dinged, whatever you wanna call it. So down, make sure you can see this, and I'm in the middle. There we go, move over a little bit. Down. Okay, that's decent, but we wanna go just a little bit more. I'm down just a little bit, and I'm just gonna lightly finish and just polish that last little bit off until we're there look at that all right again so if you just count your strokes that's great but there's different damage to these teeth all right let me take you down and i'll show you what i'm talking about And get you in nice and close on this and get some good light on it. Let's see where we at. Right there. So it's more this point right here that I want to get cleaned up. Like all this snaggle tooth stuff right here. That's not. So when you look on the side plate of this. You can still see, let me get a little bit better angle. I'm leaning way away. See how that's kind of pointed down? That's from the damage it took. So we've got to keep going. Put you back up here. That's you, whoops, oh gosh. All right, so let's keep digging, keep, There we go. So close. Finish up nice and easy. Polish that tooth. Now, when you look at it, all the damaged material's been removed. Looks just like factory again. Nice, clean, straight top plate. And then over here, we've got some nice hook to the tooth and no damage. What we got? Right there. All right, so you get all your teeth sharpened, but you're not done yet. Okay, you notice how, if we look at this straight on, that this angles down. So as you file away the tooth, it gets shorter in height. So this right here is called a raker or death gauge, okay? You can call it a drag. I've heard it called a shark's things or whatever, who knows? Um, but there's a pre preset gap in between the height of this and the top of that tooth, and it's 25 thousandths. So as this tooth gets shorter, you need to take a little bit off of this. Now, I don't recommend trying to freehand this part of it. This is where it gets touchy. Um, let's set you up. And most of these, unfortunately, I really can't show 100% how this works. So, um, this tool is made by steel. And it's the most idiot-proof thing I've used. Uh, there are other versions of this on the market. Um, but basically all we're trying to do is just, all I have to do is just lay it on top, hold it, and then file. And then all of a sudden it skates across. So now that's perfectly set back to a factory specification. All right. Um, whoever sharpened this chain before, right there, it's slightly under. 
So if I roll the file over this, it just skates. It's not doing anything, but it's just a whisper under. So that's going to be acceptable. Um, the idea is to use one of these gauges is that no matter how long the tooth is, whether it's something like this or something like that, let's say you had to file a couple of teeth way back. As long as you set that gap at 25 thousandths and they're all 25 thousandths, it doesn't matter if you just randomly took a brand new chain out of the box and sharpened a bunch of material off of it. If you went back and reset it to 25 thousandths, it cuts perfectly. Um, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. All right, I think that covers rakers. If you have any more questions, just leave them in the comment section. And uh, I'm usually pretty good about getting back to everybody. Okay, let's tie this all up and put some things together. Thanks for sticking with me this far. Um, if you like what I've shown you, give me a like for that. Um, throw a comment down in there. Let me know how your progress comes and if you actually are getting better. Um, we can touch on a few more points, but this is pretty much the basics of it. Um, again, you know, that old file that you've been hanging on to, let it go. It's just like old wore out sandpaper. You are trying to, hard, you know, you're trying to sharpen hardened steel. So, you know, your, your file is going to give out. Um, try and buy a good brand name. Um, the organs are usually accessible, but the quality is inconsistent. Um, I use Valorbe, if that's the right way to say it. These are killer files. Um, the steel brand files are pretty good. Um, what's another good one? Um, preferred, Preferred. Uh, invest in a raker gauge. It'll save you a lot of headaches. Cause like I said, just a little bit difference, a little bit of difference. It'll make the saw too jumpy or you won't, it won't actually grab. So you can have the nicest, sharpest teeth in the world and the, the rakers aren't set right and you're not taking the proper amount of chip, give or take a little tiny bit, um, you're gonna get piss poor performance. Um, another thing I wanna stress is that as you're learning how to sharpen better, use the vise, you know, or lock the saw down in, in, in a way that it's not going to move. You're not chasing anything around. You want something nice and stable so you can be repeatable, that your body's in a comfortable position. You shouldn't feel incredibly awkward while you're sharpening. Um, if your cut goes like this, that means, so if you're cutting off to, let's see, yeah. If your cut goes to the right, that means the right side teeth are sharper and are working better, cutting better. All right, so you need to take the saw out of the wood, go back, touch up the left side just a little bit better. What you'll notice is whether you're left-handed or right-handed is that one side, you're going to do a better job. Um, you're gonna get a, a a sharper tooth, uh, more consistent. So as you start to uh, realize on your weak side, what you're doing wrong, it's usually magnified just cause you're less comfortable, you know? So move around. Um, when you're sharpening chain, usually by the time you're getting towards the end of the sharpening process, you're getting frustrated or a hurry, you wanna finish. So make sure that you do your weak side first and then finish on your strong side. So that way, as you're getting frustrated in a hurry and want to finish, you're at least on a side that you get better results on. You follow me? Because if you try and do your weak side towards the end and you're hurrying on the side that you don't sharpen well on already, it's going to magnify your problem. So take that with you. I think I'm going to wrap it up and leave it there. Like I said, leave a comment uh, down below. And let me know what you liked.